Hello boys and girls, welcome to our SPSS lesson, Student Problem Solving Session. SPSS, Student Problem Solving Session. So we have this kind of diagram. I'm trying now to conclude on my first six lesson with a kind of question problem solving question or problem solving session okay so you have this kind of figure you are told x u is equal to p x u from x to u is vector p and then from x to y x to y is vector q okay so we are asked to get some of this x w so i will rub this so that i have my working space up to here and i want everything on the board okay so this is already shown it is x u x to u okay that is x to u is p and then x to y is q so i don't need this information I want to find x w so we want to find from x to w okay so number one x to w if you look at it i am looking at your ability of identifying equivalent vectors so x y is equivalent to y, u x u is equivalent to u w okay so this direction is the same because it's a straight line so in x w i find two of vector p so this is correct. So I've tested equivalent vectors. Vectors which have the same direction and the same size. So if you get for me XW is double XU. And XU is given as P. You get that? You are done. You are very okay. So I've done that. Now I look for w z so number two we are looking for w z so from w up to z there is nothing given the information we have is from x to y is q okay again i'm testing equivalent vectors so i look at this vector q its direction is towards right and it has how many units? 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I come here, I ask 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So 4 units on the right is Q. What about 8 units? Then we can write it will be also 2 vector Q. This is correct. Reason being, you are able to identify equivalent vectors. Now we come to number three, x, v, from x to v. This is our x, and I have to come to v, okay? From x to v. The two movements that have been given are diagonal movements and east towards east movement so for me to come here i have two methods i can move from here up to y and then i come here okay so i can write this one uh, let us write this question here this is question number five which is x l but now we are dealing with the number 3, xv, number 3, 
we are dealing with xv. So number three, we are dealing with xv. So xv, you have to interpret addition. It is xy plus xu. You see, this is xu. That is xu. Okay? xu. So I can also do xu and then I do xy. xy there is the same as this. xy represent size 4. Size 4, eh? 1, 2, 3, 4. Not size 8. You know, you, you people sometimes you have size 8. This is xy size 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right. So any 4 right is xy. So you see from here, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, arrow right, is still the same as q. So some students can also write this. They can say it can be xu plus xy. Remember what I taught lesson 3, 4? x is the first letter. Okay? And then v is the last letter. Okay? So xv root 1 x, y, this, and then y, sorry, y, v, okay, x, y, this, and then you do the diagonal, which will be equivalent to x, u, so y, v is equivalent to x, u, and then we can also have x, u, x, u, and then plus x, u plus u v okay so this is still x v meaning that i have two options that is what i want it to come from you then not all students will take one route no so from x to v to come here okay to move from x to v i can use that root and then this or i can take this and then go there that is what we use to call parallelogram rule parallelogram rule parallelogram rule that when you combine the two aspects that takes you from x to v you kind of come up with parallelogram. But nowadays, we don't talk so much. But the very first 844, we were mentioning two rules. Triangle rule, parallelogram rule. There are only two. So, these are the possible movements. And then, I can use now the last one. I can say XU. From x to u is p, and then u, y. u to y is q. You get that, eh? For this one, you would reverse it. x, y, from x to y is q, and then y, v, is the same as x, u. Okay? Let us go to number... Let us go to number four. X, Z. Now from X up to Z. Up to here. I'll say X. I'll do one root. You can do the other. X, W. Plus W, Z. See? From X to W. Do you remember? From X to U. That is vector P. This is found twice. So I will write 
in place of x w i'll write this is 2 p the p's are 2 this is 1 p another p 1 p second p 2 p's then from here all the way up to here any 4 towards right is q so 1 2 3 4 up to there going right is q did you see i counted right then 1 2 3 4 again q so what do i have plus 2 q okay now look at this what can i do now i can write 2 and then in bracket p plus q what did we call that do you remember factorization okay so we have this do not put your number on the right hand side no yeah it's a movement so the scalar must be on the left hand side now you have that what are we remaining with we are remaining with the number 5, xl. Number 5, xl. Now, how do you move from x up to l? Okay? Now, I am warning you, you cannot say I'll move up to here and then go up. No. We have already narrowed your two movements to be used to answer question. What the first movement we were given is a diagonal movement. You see this one. This one we gave you. And also we gave you the right four steps. Four, size four, right. And then diagonal, down. So you see this, where, what I'm holding now. Maybe I use this. You see, sorry, I can use black. This. This is the arrowhead. This. So this, if you take it back there, you see. So this is equivalent. Any two vertical box, the diagonal of this nature, diagonal tending to left, is p. So even here, this diagonal from here to here is p. But since I'm going to L, I will reverse. So I've reversed P. Okay. I've reversed P. So I'll say reverse P. I'll say reverse. Okay. Reverse. Reverse. P. After reversing P, I'm here now. Then I have to go up to here. So to go up to here, I count. Right for four steps to the right is q now let us see how many steps if you are following if you are following this is what i've done there i'm doing that and that that's what i'm doing i've reversed so i've already done reverse diagonal p i am here one two three four five six okay so, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 right is by Q. 6 right will be what? I've written right right to give you the sense of direction. 4 and 6 gives you the sense of size. So, you cross multiply. 6 by Q divided by 4. 2 2, 2, 3. So, 3 over 2, Q. So, I'll say plus 3 over 2, then a vector, Q. I want you now to get things right. Okay? To get things right. The interpretation of greed. 
the interpretation of greed gives you a very good backup of understanding that is what happens okay now as i conclude i want you to see see one thing here a very good observation for you for next lesson i have x v yeah? we got x v as p plus q that was our x v then we had x z what did we get x z is here 2 in the bracket p plus q see now i can write a conclusion i can write a conclusion x z is equal to 2 x you see x z it is here 2 is here p plus q p plus q represent x v that's what i've written meaning that from x to z is double x v x to z is double x v anytime you have this kind of relationship then you extract x z okay if i divide by x v the answer is 2 to 1. Divide both sides by xv. XV. You get this. It means from this interpretation, x, v, z, they are on a straight line. x, v, z are collinear meaning what they are on a straight line look but sometimes it is kidding it means x v and z are on a straight line so when you have vectors repeating them somewhere either a half two times a third times then the letters involved are said to be in a straight line x v is this x z is this you can see this is the same eh? so this and this are equal i can now write xv in place of this it's like i've taken this which stands for this here so i have xz is 2 xv x v and z are said to be in a straight line they are equivalent but one is a multiple of the other one is found in the other like xv is found on a straight line xz that gives us a springboard for collinearity our next lesson will try to do simple thing to show you collinearity till then subscribe bye bye